<clears throat> you shine up like a new penny. <laughs> what makes a great line from a film great? Is it the cadence in which the actor says it? The reaction of those around them? The sheer quotability of it? Honestly, I don't have a straightforward answer for you. But what I do know is that there are so many fantastic lines that we could do about 80 gajillion videos about all of the different quotes and such. So instead, in this video, I'm going to target a very specific type of line. Writers spend hours upon hours working to write and refine their scripts, perfecting the dialogue. And sometimes, actors come in, splurt out something at random, and that turns out way better than what the writer originally had. Ain't that just a kick in the pants? But yeah, improvisation has given us some of the best lines in cinema history. And today we're going to be taking a look at a handful of them and talk about the story behind their creation. From Star Wars to Goodfellas, these are some of the most famous movie lines that were completely improvised. Let's dive right into it. Let's start this list off with a line that I can guarantee that you have referenced at least once in your life, as it's such an iconic line that basically everyone knows it. In the film Titanic, Leonardo DiCaprio's character Jack famously shouted the line I'm the king of the world! while standing on the bow of the ship. It is probably the most famous moment from this film, and it is a DiCaprio original. When the actor first stepped foot on the replica ship, he said the phrase while in the presence of director James Cameron, who insisted that DiCaprio repeat it on film. Within what is arguably the best Star Wars film, Episode 5 The Empire Strikes Back, there is one moment that is so memorable, so iconic, that even people who aren't Star Wars fans probably know what you're referencing when you bring it up. Which is saying something, since it is literally just two words. I know. This line comes from Harrison Ford, feeling that Solo's originally scripted response to Leia telling him that she loves him, which was a simple I love you too, was just a bit out of character for the dashing rogue that we all know and love. So instead, he busted out the simple response and managed to perfectly capture everything that Han Solo is, while still somehow managing to say the same thing as the original line. You know, the movies within the Marvel Cinematic Universe aren't exactly known for being emotional tour de forces. Great action? Yep, they have that. Humorous interactions between characters? Oh, you know that they have that in spades. Hard-hitting emotional character moments? Nah, not really, no. That is, of course, except for one of the most soul-crushingly sad moments in blockbuster history. The end of Avengers Infinity War and the dusting of one Peter Parker. For this moment, the Russos gave Tom Holland free reign to say basically whatever he wanted to in Parker's final moments, only specifying that he had to be not ready to go. So when he dropped, I don't want to go, that is pure Tom Holland bringing us all to tears. When I bring up the granddaddy of all summer blockbusters, Jaws, what line immediately comes to mind? Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. I mean, that is a great moment, but no, I'm of course referring to this line. You're gonna need a bigger boat. That line was actually originally a bit of an inside joke on set, referring to the relatively small boat the production team was using. And when it came time for Roy Scheider's big moment, he chose to use the joke within the context of the film, giving us this iconic line. The famous courtroom scene from the film A Few Good Men could have gone a lot differently if Jack Nicholson had delivered his iconic line from this moment the way that it was originally scripted. On the page, the line was, you already have the truth, which Nicholson took and bent into, you can't handle the truth. Yeah, that one. We'll just ignore that this kind of changed the initial tone of the confrontation between Nicholson and Tom Cruise, and the implications of the line itself. Regardless, it made for a great bit of cinema. Speaking of great cinema, let's talk about Goodfellas, the classic mobster flick starring Ray Liotta and Joe Pesci. When anyone talks about this film, they more than likely bring up the rant that Pesci goes on in the club. As you might expect at this point in the video, this scene was not scripted the way that it came out on the big screen. In fact, this rant here was something that Pesci largely based upon his own experiences. Pesci and Leota did do some slight rehearsal of this moment, but everyone else involved had absolutely no idea what was going on. You know, if we're talking about iconic movie lines, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this classic line from Casablanca. He's looking at you, kid. 
As you should expect by this point in the video, this line was not in the script. Instead, it was something that Humphrey Bogart had previously said to Ingrid Bergman away from set while he was trying to teach her how to play poker. It stuck with him, and so he decided to use it in the film. Filming out on location in a non-closed set can sometimes bring about some rather interesting movie moments, such as this one that we saw in Midnight Cowboy. As Dustin Hoffman and John Voight were walking down a busy New York street, a car tried to cut Hoffman off, almost running him over. The actor's genuine reaction is what we got on screen, with him slapping the hood of the car and shouting, Walk in here! Walk in here! Which is simply iconic. If you were to ask me, what's my favorite movie monologue of all time, I would look you dead in the eye and tell you that it was Rutger Hauer's speech from the end of Blade Runner. Anyways, what makes this already incredible monologue all the more amazing is that it was largely created by Hauer himself. The version we got on screen was quite a bit different from how it was scripted, and was reportedly so moving on the day of shooting that crew members were reduced to tears. Ray Fiennes was perhaps the best possible choice to portray the Dark Lord himself, Voldemort, in the Harry Potter film franchise, mainly because he is a fantastic actor who truly loves and appreciates the craft. And he does what he can to try to elevate the acting of everyone around him as well, which is what he was doing during his big speech in The Deathly Hallows Part 2, where he changed up what he said each time to try to get a fresh reaction out of the other actors with each and every take. Who is more experienced at busting out memorable one-liners and catchphrases than the Terminator himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger? No one, that's who. And in T2 Judgment Day, the final moments of the T-800's robotic life gave us a fantastic line that he delivered completely off the cuff. After getting torn to pieces by the T-1000, yet still somehow prevailing, a worn Arnold turned to John Connor and simply said, I need a vacation. A rather humorous line, considering what happened next to the big guy. A Clockwork Orange is one of those films that you can often expect to be placed pretty high on best movie of all time lists. And the home invasion scene from that film is considered a seminal bit of cinema. Malcolm McDowell randomly decided to begin singing Singing in the Rain during that rather harrowing scene. And director Stanley Kubrick liked the level of insanity that it brought to the character, so much so that he decided to leave it in and thus, film history was made. Doctor Strangelove is an odd movie. It's weird in the beginning, bizarre in the middle, and the end takes a nosedive straight into wonderful absurdity. And one line, specifically the final line of the film, perfectly illustrates this, and it was 100% a bit of ad-libbing. After spending the entire film confined to a wheelchair, Peter Sellers' Doctor Strangelove suddenly stands up, proclaiming to the world, Mind Fuhrer, I can walk! It's weird, it's random, and it's fantastic. Comedy as a genre lends itself to improv, so of course it would make it onto the silver screen. And one bit of improv gave us the most memorable moment from Animal House, the human zit. Yep, the moment when John Belushi turned his face into a mashed potato spewing cannon was something that the comedian came up with himself catching his co-stars off guard. And he wrapped it all up with one of the most on-the-nose explanations of all time. I'm a zit. Get it? Apocalypse Now is truly a fantastic film, a magnificent bit of cinema. However, the moments where Marlon Brando is on screen can get just a tad bit weird. Like, really, really bizarre at times. This is because when Brando arrived to film his scenes for the movie, not only was he overweight, but he also had no clue what his lines were. So what we got in the final piece was largely Brando obscured from view by harsh shadows, saying a lot of random nonsense. Like the line, you're an errand boy sent by a grocery clerk, which doesn't make a lick of sense, but dang if it doesn't stick with you. Mel Brooks movies are well known for being incredibly hilarious flicks, largely due to Mel Brooks' talents as a comedy writer. However, one of the most memorable lines from Young Frankenstein didn't come from him. Throughout the movie, the hump on Marty Feldman's back kept switching sides. It was a great visual gag on its own, but when attention was drawn to it, the actor chose to throw out a rather hilarious line, acting like he was completely unaware of the hump entirely. 
Perhaps I could help you with that hump. What hump? Wonder Woman did a great job at capturing the fish-out-of-water feeling that Diana would experience in her situation, especially while dealing with men, something she had never even seen before. And this also led to a fantastic improv line. During the scene on the boat where Diana and Steve Trevor were discussing men, Chris Pine dropped the line, You know, where I, co where I come from, I'm not considered average. Referring to, well, you know. This moment was not in the script, but added a genuine bit of humor in an already entertaining moment. Saving Private Ryan is yet another film that many people consider one of the best movies of all time. And that might just be due to the fantastic cast, including Matt Damon, who gave us this solid gem of a line. While talking with Tom Hanks' character about life back home with his brothers, the entire story that he tells there is completely made up by Damon, including the line, Picture a girl who took a nosedive from the ugly tree, which has just got to be one of the best ways to call someone ugly that I've ever heard. Tommy Lee Jones is one of those actors that kind of feels like he plays the same character in each film that he takes on, that character being the kind of tough guy who doesn't give a crap about anything outside of his objectives. And one line from The Fugitive perfectly encapsulates this. See, the original script had his character confronting Harrison Ford's character and responding to his pleas with a simple, that's not my problem. Jones took that and instead went with, I don't care, which not only says basically the same exact thing, but tells you a lot more about the priorities that his character values, mainly doing his job no matter what. Love it or hate it, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade has a few moments that are incredibly humorous, such as when Indy realized that he had had relations with a woman who was not only a Nazi, but also someone his father had had relations with as well. This actually came about because of a joke line that Sean Connery threw out during filming. When Indy asked how he knew that she was a Nazi, he jokingly said, She talks in her sleep. Which made the crew laugh so much that they decided to keep the line in. Speaking of comedic lines that were left in after causing the crew to chuckle, we've got to talk about The Godfather. You know, one of the most gut-bustingly funny movies of all time. But there is one line that makes me giggle every time. Originally, Richard Castellano was scripted to just say, leave the gun, and then move on. However, the actor added a little spice, elevating the line to iconic status. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Olaf is probably one of the more entertaining parts of the already awesome Disney flick Frozen. And this line made many people love him even more. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. <laughs> now this moment wasn't actually originally in the script. It was actually just something that actor Josh Gad threw out there as a joke during recording. And when it made it into the final film, even Gad himself was surprised to hear it there. My personal favorite film of all time also contains one of my all-time favorite lines, which itself is a completely improvised one. Bill Paxton's character Hudson in 1986's Aliens hits the perfect blend of comedic relief while not being overly annoying. And with lines like, That's it, man. It's game over, man. It's game over. He left his mark on pop culture. And that previously mentioned line, by the way, was something that Paxton just threw out on set while his character was having a bit of a breakdown. Director James Cameron liked this line and decided to keep it in. Here is one that you might have heard before, but it doesn't make it any less awesome. You know that moment in The Two Towers when Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas finally catch up to the band of orcs who had captured Merry and Pippin, only to find evidence that the hobbits may have perished? You know how Aragorn kicks a helmet and cries out in agony over the loss of his friends? Well, it turns out that cry was actually in pain, as when Viggo Mortensen kicked the helmet, he accidentally wound up breaking his toe. You know, they say that acting is pain, and well, in this case, it's truer than most. You have got to be on a whole different level of awesome to only appear in a movie for less than a half an hour and win an Oscar for it. Which is exactly what Anthony Hopkins did with Silence of the Lambs. And with some of the acting choices he made, it's completely understandable. One such choice was including a rather disturbing bit of hissing after describing eating a man's liver. A noise that wasn't in the original script, but went a long way towards illustrating just what sort of insane monster Clarice was dealing with in the form of Dr. Hannibal Lecter. 
Which of these famous movie lines did you already know were improvised? Which one surprised you? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and while you're down there, why not consider subscribing to Screen Rant for more awesome content just like this each and every day. Thanks for watching, and stay safe out there.